So hello everyone. This is Lubos Pirkel from CFD Support. Welcome to the webinar about aerodynamics simulations by TCFD. In today's webinar, we would like to show you how to make CFD simulations in TCFD. I hope everything works well. We are running live, so in case of any technical problems, feel free to contact us in the future and we will gladly answer all your questions and comments. The webinar is being recorded and its recording will be made available publicly on our YouTube channel. So, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, at the end of the webinar, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. So feel free to ask your questions during the webinar and later we will, we will answer them. Um, I think maybe it's time to, to start, to really start. So I will start with the webinar speakers. So please let, let me introduce us. So I will start with me. This is me. My name is Lubos Perkl. I'm co-founder of CFD Support and my current job is telling the world about CFD Support. And uh, today I am here in our Prague office with my colleague Radek Matsa. Uh, hello, Radek. Hello, Luboj. Hello. Uh, hello. So, Radek, are you ready for the webinar? Yes, I'm really ready. I see that I'm looking a bit older. Well, yes, still, yes, yeah. yeah. Time, time goes very fast. Yeah. That's oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time is running. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I'd like to note that Radek is our head engineer and also senior developer oh, here at CFD yeah. Support. And so oh. I. I created a little beard for you on your face. So do you, do you like it? Are you, are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. So maybe okay. after <laughs> several I... months, I will be looking exactly like that. Okay, you. so I will, I will <laughs> okay. erase it. So I, I, I hope you, you, can, you can see Radek now as he looks right now, clearly shaved and well, well fit and smiling all the time. Okay, so, okay. Okay, so I'll continue with my presentation. I, I, we, we are ready, right? Yes, yes, we are ready, yes, please. Continue. Okay, okay, thanks. So here's the agenda of today's webinar. So the webinar is going to take about uh, one hour, depending on the number of your questions. Uh, there will be three sections in it. In the first part, I will give a brief introduction of TCFD and uh, our company. Uh, then in the second part, the Radek will show uh, the real uh, live demonstration how to how to do the simulations practically in TCFD and finally in the in the last part there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers so feel free to ask your questions anytime uh, during the webinar some questions will be answered uh, right uh, during the webinar the the rest of the of the questions will be answered later via email what's important you can be sure that all the questions will be answered that's important Okay, so I will start with a little introduction of our company. So our company is called CFD Support. We celebrate 10 years this year. Our headquarters is located in Prague, Czech Republic. And CFD Support deals with engineering simulations, mainly with computational fluid dynamics. Uh, as you know, simulations are pretty useful everywhere where the fluid flows. They tell us pretty valuable information, which is used in mechanical engineering, civil engineering, manufacturing, and many other fields. CFD support provides a wide range of services in CFD field. We deliver, for example, consultancy projects all across the CFD field. We organize open phone training, and we provide technical support and custom code development for it. But of course, our core business nowadays is developing, selling, and supporting CFD code called TCFD, which is today's webinar about. So TCFD is a comprehensive CFD workflow, which successfully merged the benefits of open source with the benefits of commercial codes. So due to the open source nature, TCFD is unlimited. It's extremely flexible. And due to the commercial code nature, uh, TCFD has a graphical interface, it has professional technical support, it's robust, it's accurate, it's automated, it's well tested and simply it's, it's ready, it's ready for the industry. Uh, this is how the graphical interface looks like. The user can do pretty everything here from the simulation setup to the simulation run. 
and uh, detailed post-processing of the results. Besides this graphical interface, also the batch mode is available and the CFD can be run by another software or the CFD can run another software. Uh, about the main applications of TCFD, the TCFD core business has always been turbo machinery simulations, for example, pumps. TCFD can simulate many kinds of pumps, all the pump sizes, both radial and axial machines. Uh, and uh, yeah, pumps is perhaps the biggest market. Then also fans and blowers, the same. All of them, big ones, small ones, compressible, incompressible, radial, axial, uh, then hydro turbines, then also uh, compressors and uh, turbochargers and turbines, and also wind turbines. So that's the turbo machinery field. And later what had worked so well in turbo machinery field, we decided to extend for the external aerodynamics to simulate cars or the aircraft. And nowadays, TCFD also simulates the internal aerodynamics uh, like water valves or hydraulic valves or various uh, manifolds and piping systems. TCFD is also capable to simulate propellers and ship hydrodynamics. Uh, yeah, so those, those are applications which is TCFD best of. And, uh, so about the general general properties of TCFD, so I, we should say that TCFD is from the beginning developed in a way to fit the modern engineering workflows. So it's fully automated. It can be used either as a black box, so the user can put the data in, TCFD does its job, and later the user picks up the results at the end or the CFD can be used as a highly sophisticated CFD code where all the options are open. So I would say that the, the beauty of the CFD is that it's the user who decides how deep to dive into CFD or not at all, just, just using it. So that's, that's the basic, basic purpose. Um, also, as already mentioned, the CFD is from the beginning developed in a way to fit any existing workflow. So it has strong integration ability. The CFD has strong interfaces and it's very flexible. So as you know, uh, in every enterprise, uh, the, the engineers usually have some existing workflow already and the CFD is capable to fit in it. No matter what design tool is used, no matter what CAD tool is used, no matter what meshing system is used, the CFD is still here to fit any workflow, do its job and deliver the results for the user's judgment or for further structural analysis or for, for the optimization loops, for example. So the CFD is very flexible. The CFD goes well together with uh, very, wor very complex workflows and optimization loops. It's scriptable. The trial version is available and also the real tutorials based on real projects we, we did in the past are available. So, so it's pretty complex and flexible. We believe in the importance of technical support. So support is coded in our DNA and also it's coded in the name of our company. For 10 years, we have supported the engineers in achieving their goals. So we are obsessed with professional technical support. We have special process for it. It's been, or it's powered by, by the OS ticket system. TCFD is natively compiled for Windows and Lin Linux operating systems. So no need of any virtual machines. The engineering workflow is exactly the same on both systems. Our Typical user does the case setup and first TCFD tests in Windows, and then he or she takes uh, TCFD on Linux clusters to use it on multiple cores to fully benefit from the fact that TCFD is unlimited on number of, of cores. Uh, TCFD includes an automated meshing system 
based on SnapX mesh, and also the external meshes can be loaded. They can be created in another software and they can be loaded into TCFD. So we always leave the decision about the mesh up to the user. So some users prefer automated meshing, the other users prefer the external meshes. That's fair enough. So we leave this decision always on the user. We respect that all the time. Um, TCFD has strong post-processing. A very simulation that is executed in TCFD has its its own HTML report with the results. The volume fields are or can be visualized in Paraview, and the integral results are saved in in CSV database files. So there's a really good system to to keep the results and compare them and evaluate them. Yeah, as you know, the software development is never finished. So TCFD is under continual development. The development is users driven. So we continually gather the requirements from the TCFD users. We evaluate them and we keep adding them to the or into the uh, new TCFD version releases. We use a special system for code development in a team called GitLab. Yeah, so now I have a few TCFD project examples to show you TCFD in action. I have prepared a few examples. Uh, yeah, uh, I, as you know, I could speak all the day long about each of them, so I will be quick here. I will just point out the most important information and the most of the details are available publicly in public reports, so feel free to ask about the details about the uh, about uh, these examples. So, so in the first example, I would like to show you, uh, we did this very recently. It's the Potsdam propeller benchmark. It's a famous propeller uh, test case. It's been measured in the SVA Potsdam laboratory. Uh, the measurement data is publicly available as well as many other CFD codes results. So there is pretty, a lot of data publicly available. So below uh, you can see the workflow scheme. The yeah, here the CAT model was prepared in Salome. The mesh was created in Snappy Hex mesh, and then the simulation was made in DCFD. On the right hand side, you can see the results. It's the thrust coefficient, the torque coefficient, and the efficiency versus advance ratio. So the agreement of the simulation results with the measurement results is outstanding. It's it's really perfect. And in fact, we couldn't wish for, for better results. So this benchmark propeller is really great. I will jump on, on the other example I'd like to show you. This one uh, we did in collaboration with ZVV Z Machinery. It's the fun, uh, fun maker from Czech Republic. Uh, it's a centrifugal fan benchmark. In this particular benchmark, the engineers were interested in the accuracy of TCFD. So the simulation of this particular fan was pretty challenging, actually, because of quite wide impeller and quite low pressure difference uh, over flow rate ratio. So the measurement results were available or are available. And we could compare the simulation results with the measurement results. We made both steady state and transient simulations to compare steady state and transient approach. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see the, the comparison of the results. It's the efficiency versus flow rate and the total pressure versus flow rate. As you can see, the agreement uh, of the results is very good and it was well above the expectations. So below you can see the workflow scheme. The original geometry was designed in ZVV Z in-house code. Then it was cleaned in FreeCAD. The mesh was created in SnappyX mesh and the simulation was made in TCFD. Uh, again, the details of this benchmark are available in public report in PDF. So I will go on. And then the next example I'd like to show you is a benchmark on compressible fluid flow simulation. We did this benchmark in a collaboration with CZ, who produced the turbochargers. It's a simulation of compressor side of the turbocharger. The compressor impeller is of 55 millimeters in radius. This turbocharger is used in big diesel engines. 
the measurement results and the commercial code results are available for comparison. So we simulated complete compressor characteristics. Uh, we made like three speed lines at 60, 80 and, and 90,000 RPM. On the right hand side, you can see the comparison of the results. As you can see, the agreement of the results is again, very good. Below you can see the workflow scheme. Uh, the original geometry was uh, designed in uh, CZ in-house code. Then the model was uh, cleaned in Salome and, and the mesh was created in, uh, uh, actually it was, the mesh was created as well in, as well, uh, in Salome and the simulation was made in TCFD. And again, the details of this benchmark are available in the public report in PDF. I'll go on again. So uh, yeah, this one is a detailed benchmark we made on TCFD parallel scaling. As you know, the scalability is one of the most important features of any CFD code. In modern CFD, it's critical for any CFD code to show the linear speed up with increasing the number of simulation score, simulation cores, especially for unlimited CFD codes like TCFD is. The scalability is crucial because it's users can use their hardware resources to the fullest. So we made a detailed study of the CFD parallel scaling. The tested case was Francis Hydro Turbine. The scaling results are amazing. On the right-hand side, you can see the key figures. Uh, you can see the speed up is almost linear and the parallel efficiency is very high. So this study clearly shows that the CFD has very high parallel scaling efficiency and it's great for large simulations on multiple, pro multiple processors. Uh, below, you can see the workflow scheme. The original geometry was created in the Rhinoceros. The mesh was created in Numeca Fine Turbo. And finally, the simulation was executed in TCFD. And again, the details are available in the, in the public report in, in PDF. Uh, the next example I would like to show you is a complex external aerodynamics of the Spitfire aircraft from World War II. We found the CAT model of the aircraft and also the original measurement data uh, from uh, the World War II. So uh, we, we compared uh, the simulation results with the measurement results. Uh, this case is quite specific because it's a mix of the external aerodynamics with the, the turbo machinery aerodynamics. Uh, you can see the results uh, in the plots on the right hand side. Uh, the agreement with the results data was good. Uh, the model was cleaned in FreeCAD, the mesh was created in Snappy Hex mesh, and the simulation was executed in TCFD. And again, the details of this uh, benchmark are available in, in the public report in PDF. Yeah, the next example I'd like to show you uh, is uh, an optimization study. We did this study together with German company Friendship Systems, who developed their product called Cases. Cases is a parametric CAT platform for design studies with simulation tools. Together, we made a study on an axial fan optimization. Optimization study is a cycle of many simulations of many designs. Uh, the fan designs were created in Cases. The meshes were created in Snappy Hex mesh, and they were simulated in TCFD. Below, you can see the workflow scheme as a result the user gets an optimized fan model with a higher efficiency. So we did in this study and final axial fan design uh, shows uh, approximately 3% higher efficiency than the original one. And again, the details of this study are available in the public rep report in PDF. The last example I would, would like to show you is even more profound. It's again, the optimization study, but now the aim was the volute, volute optimization. Uh, the geometry was uh, now again created in cases, but this time the mesh was created in Grid Pro and then simulated in TCFD. And the final volute design has pressure loss reduced by 10%, so which is, which is great achievement. And again, uh, the details of this study are available in the public report in PDF. Yeah, so all the optimization studies clearly show us that the simulations are extremely important. 
the fluid flow effects are not intuitive at all. For example, if you have two designs, it's very difficult or maybe it may be even impossible to guess which design is better than the other one, right? It's almost impossible to guess which one is better. Uh, and uh, in terms of, of, of fluid dynamics efficiency, right? So uh, I have a little example for you. It's free volute designs from the previous study. And if we cut out, if we cut out the, the top of the volute and we, if you look inside, inside the volute, uh, we can see that these free volutes, as they differ in their tank size and tank position, right? And would you guess which which design shows the best efficiency and the best performance and the lowest pressure loss? Would you guess which one? Uh, I, of course, I will tell you. It's the it's the middle one, right? Here it's the middle one. So it turns out that the effective fluid flow likes freedom, but only a certain degree of freedom shows the best efficiency and too much freedom or too little freedom is not that effective. So that's why the simulations are so important because there's no other way. We just need simulations to evaluate the designs. There's no other way we, 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 we can only guess and we, yeah, guessing is, is not successful in, in fluid dynamics efficiency. Okay. So as we have seen, the CFD is able to fit in various workflows. There are maybe hundreds of CAE tools available in the market out there. And the number of combinations for this reason is almost infinite. And with the CFD, everyone can create his own workflow that fits the best, his purposes, skills, needs, and resources. So it's extremely flexible again. Uh, Okay, so TCFD is under continual development. Speaking about this year, in April, we introduced the latest version, TCFD 1904, with many new interesting capabilities. The next release is scheduled in October, uh, where we will add, for example, the support for multi-phase flows, uh, for heat transfer, and many other capabilities. If we take a look even more into the future, we have big goals and we are really excited about them. By the end of 2020, we will introduce TCFD as a CAE platform rather than just a CFD code. So we will introduce a modern CAE engineering workflow that offers a complete engineering work workflow, including CAD, CFD and structural analysis, and all of them based on open sources. The whole workflow will be managed by the automated master process, which communicates the results with the database. So TCFD will still keep its modularity and it will be able to be used inside uh, any other workflow. Regarding this, we have now two ways of development. We have two ways of thinking. The horizontal one, which is adding new tools, new simulation plugins and the complexity and the vertical way of thinking, the vertical development, which is adding the new applications, uh, the new capabilities and uh, high tech methods for the plugins. Okay, so uh, finally, I, I finished my part of my presentation and it's time for Radek for the real, uh, real uh, example. So Radek, uh, may I ask you, are you ready for your part of the presentation? Yeah, hello again. Yes, I am ready. I am ready. So you can make me a presenter. Okay, which I'm doing right now. So I'm switching. I'm handing over right now. I am handing over like, my oh, presentation right. over over to you. Okay. And uh, it's been done. So I believe in a couple of seconds you will we will see Radex screen and and you will be you will be able to continue with our great webinar during this hot day in Prague, right? Ready? All right, all right. <laughs> okay. Oh, so. Yeah, we can see your screen. You can go. You can go ahead. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Lubos. So, hello, hello to everybody who is watching. And in this part of the webinar, I am going to show you a live example how to set up an example of simulation of external aerodynamics of a car body, let's say. So we will 
we'll take the drift hour model, which is pretty 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 known model, which was developed by by the University of Munich. So it is a it is a real shape model, which is measured, which can which can be used for validation of your codes and which can be used of, for validation of of course of TCFD and to play with and learn how to set up how to set up the the, the case. So we will take the geometry of this drift hour model, and if you would like to use it and try it by yourself, you can ask for a trial license of TCFD and you can download it. For example, this particular example of drift hour car model simulation. So I will take this and we will start from really beginning from the scratch to set up to set up this this geometry. So at the beginning we have just the, the geometry which which defines our object to be simulated. So which is here. So it's a set of STLs defining each part of the geometry. So I will open TCFD and we can start from very beginning to show and show how to set up the case. So basically this is a plain template of TCFD. As Lubosch already mentioned, the graphical user interface is implemented directly in Paraview. So you can use, use it, the graphical user interface, both for the setup phase and also for the post-processing phase for the visualization of, of the results. So let's let's start. So this is the this is the layout here is the pipeline browser in which we can see each object we will create during the setup or during the the visualization visualization of the results and applying specific filters then there is a property menu properties menu in which for example this tcfd setup can be done then we have here the render view in which we can visualize mesh results any other object for the visualization and the output message window in which we can follow the output of the solver, output of the of the power view itself, and output of the of the, for example, of of the setup of the TCAD setup. So let's start with the with the with the first part of or with the first menu in the TCFD setup window so first of all we would like to all we we will do we would like to save in some file to to have to have the preset case and preset file for the future usage for example so i will go let's say here in my webinars today's webinar and let's say my webinar setup okay then there is a check setup button which can which can be used for checking the the actual setup for the for the simulation if everything is set correctly and uh, if there is no mistake or no no topological mis misprint let's say so first 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 parameter to be set is the simulation type so tcfd is always focused always focused on particular application so in this case we will use this virtual tunnel so we would like to put our object our car into virtual tunnel and simulate it and as as it is in the let's say real virtual tunnel or, or going along along the road at the given speed so virtual tunnel then first menu is simulation we will go for the steady state because we 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 have no no much we have no we have only let's say 30 minutes to show the example so we will create just a steady state simulation with pretty rough mesh to be able to simulate it within my part number of processor there is no limitation so i have here 12 processors numerical order we can go for the second but for the very first simulation, I always suggest to start with the first order scheme. If everything is running well, then you should go for the second order scheme. Apply, convergent check. So TCFD includes some some uh, capabilities how to stop the simulation before the maximum iteration are reached. 
following some particular rules for and stopping criteria criteria for the for the stopping the simulation. Then the physics. So we, we will we are going to use the air as a fluid, and we will use the default fluid parameters, or you can go for your particle dynamic viscosity, difference density, and so on. So we will go for the for the default reference frame. In this case, we are not going to simulate the rotation. So, so reference frames are is a feature how to define the rotation in your for your simulation. So in this case, it's okay to have only one reference frame, one static frame. Yeah, so there, there will be no rotation in this particular case. And then we are coming to the components. So now, for example, if, you, if I double click the component menu, then the components menu will be opened and all the others will be closed. So let me show you, double click. And now everything is closed and only the menu components is open it's opened so scale factor means what what are the source units of your input geometry so in this case the source unit are millimeters so i have to tell pcfd that the source units are millimeters because the solver always works in in the si units so in, in meters number of components means that uh, any and the geometry can be composed of more components, usually some static and non-static or moving or rotating frames or rotating components. But in this case, we will have just one component, one region, which will define the, our virtual tunnel. Then the bounding box. So there is no need to define geometrically or using some CAT geometry or these STL geometries for definition of the of the virtual tunnel, so the bounding box of the virtual tunnel. For this purpose, you can enable this bounding box and create the dimensions by yourself. So, okay, let me. I will. We can then set the bounding box for the for our model. So I will go 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 on, and then, then I will go back to to the setup to set the dimensions of the bounding box. So now we would like to load our our model. So in this case, we will use the, the directory with STLs. So I will find our directory. So in webinars, here is the directory with STLs we have downloaded. So let, let me use this. So now TCFD is loading all the STLs which are available within this within this directory. It's, it's a bit analyzed. It's a bit analyzed, so the TCV analyzes analyzes a bit this input geometry, so it takes some time to to be loaded. And as you can see, there are many many components. Yeah, so in this component menu or these patches, there are all the STLs for which we should assign the type of the boundary and the refinement of the mesh at these boundaries. And because we are using this bounding box, then that we have six six virtual planes that, which define the inlet outlets side of the virtual tunnel and top and the bottom of the virtual tunnel. Okay, because the drift hour model is kind of Lego, Lego, so you can combine several kind of bodies. You can add mirrors or, or not. So I will show you. All the variants, let's say, but we will start with the with the with the with the, with the simplest model to be to be simulated pretty quickly. So, for example, first we will use this body close, which is a simple simple shape. So I will set it as a wall, yeah, so standard boundary type for the for the wall. So whenever I will apply. Okay, hope, yeah, here I need to assign these components to be open. Yeah, so I, if you click this I button, then then the model will be visualized. Yeah, so this is a part of the of the car body, so simplified model. And maybe now it's a correct correct time to define a proper dimension of the of the bounding box. So the model 
is a real of a real dimensions and I think it displays around the point zero zero zero. So let me let me show you. So here you can see the main axis. So for example, for the X I will create something like like this, let's say eight meters before the car and let's say 16 meters behind the car. The width of the tunnel will be, for example, six meters. So let me set this six meters. And and the and the height of the tunnel will be let's say five meters. Okay, so now you can see the position of our object with respect to the to the, our virtual tunnel and and I think the point zero zero yeah you can see that now the model is a little bit below the 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 origin zero 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 so let me let me set something like this yeah to be to be near the near the near the the bottom part of the virtual tunnel okay so now I am satisfied let's say with the with the dimensions and we can continue with the with the definition of our our object so next part are for example the body the rest of the body of the model so there are three main shapes so estate fastback and notchback so let let us use this estate body so we can define the estate body and windows for the estate state type of the of the geometry okay you can see now we have the estate and you can see that still the mirrors are missing so we will go for the for the mirrors and i will use just the cover so without the mirrors so we will just for the first simulation we will use this simplified simplified model okay so now we need to we need to set the the parameters of the mesh so let me first start with the background mesh size which is the largest cell within within the mesh so to be rough enough for our computation let's say so we can we can define let's say something like this and we can also visualize the background my size compared with respect to our model so let me for for the testing simulation it will be okay so this is our largest cell but we would like to have the finer finer mesh at our object so let for each of the part we will define some we will define the level of refinement which means how many times the cells will be refined at at the particular part of our object so let me let me go for something like this so the minimum level is three maximum level will, will be four and what does it mean the maximum level of refinement is always applied at the height uh, at the place with the high curvature so for example let's say uh, in this part along the along the lights for example where the sharp edges can be seen so at these places the maximum level will be applied and at the smooth and narrow places and narrow surfaces there will be the minimum level of refinement we can also apply the boundary layer but i will i will not set for this particular example because then the meshing process is it's more complicated and it takes more time to to be to, to be created the mesh right okay and then because we are going for virtual tunnel so i will set the level zero for all the parts and maybe for the z min which is the bottom which is the floor i will apply the higher level of refinement each type if you can see if i set level one here then for all types wall the level one is is placed so now i am i have to go back for three and four and here because uh, i would like to i am not uh, interested in the let's say in the what is happening at the at the, at the walls 
at the walls, at the, at the side walls and the top wall of the virtual tunnel, I can go for slip wall slip boundary condition. So it's kind of wall without the friction. And because the bottom is really the wall because it is sitting at, um, at the road, let's say, or at the bottom of the virtual tunnel. So I will go for the wall, but I will unlock it to define a different level of refinement. Yeah, so I can set it, for example, in this way. And for wall slip kind, I will set level zero for the for the bottom side and for, for, for the top side of the, of the virtual tunnel. Okay, so this is, let's say quickly about the setting, the properties of the, of the, of the mesh. And then the last point to be defined or last parameter to be defined is the internal point. So we, we need to tell the mesher if he would like to mesh the, the object from the outside or from the inside. Of course, you need to mesh it from outside. So you can use this for the visualization. Okay, now you can see this point. So I need to move this point some, somewhere within the virtual tunnel out from our model. So for example, this place is okay. So I will click apply. So anytime you click apply, all the changes are, and all the changes of the parameters are saved. And to be sure not to lose the data, we can go back to the general and save the current setup. Okay. So here is the topology graph. So we have one inlet, one outlet, and we have one part, one component to be simulated. Okay, we can we can we can keep it in this way. Then the speed line. So this is the this is the parameters of the simulated point. So the condition of the simulation. So we will use just one point at one one velocity, for example. So let let us set, for example, I don't know, two two thousand iteration, the maximum number of iterations. Turbulence model, we will stick with the K omega SST and standard wall functions. At the inlet, we will set the, the fixed velocity at the inlet. And we will model, we will simulate the car at speed for 40 meters per second, for example. Turbulence intensity, for example, let's say, 5% uh, is maybe too much, so let's say 1% one, 1 of turbulence intensity and turbulence dissipation rate. Okay, let's say 1000. Okay, go to the outlet boundary condition. So, so there is just fixed pressure because we are simulating the incompressible case. So we can set zero at the, at, at the outlet. So kind of reference, reference pressure at the outlet. Initial condition. We need to set some meaningful values, let's say. So we will, because we are simulating the velocity of 40 meters per second, so we can set it in this way. And turbulent dissipation, for example, we can set to the to the inlet boundary condition value, for example. The simulation controls menu shows you or uh, allows you to change some under relaxation factors and the bounding limits for the solver. It is always set with for the best practice value for the safe value based on based on your physics you choose. So there is no need to change anything for the for very for very beginning. For more advanced users you can play a bit with these values for for example faster convergence but then it is it is not so stable so be careful about changing these values. And the post-processing, very important part because we need to have something at the end of the simulation. So we need to post-process post the data. So averaging window, averaging window is window over which uh, and means how many iterations are used for averaging the result. So for example, my, I usually use 10%, 10 of overall iteration. So when I, if I set 2000, so I will go for 200. 
report pressure units, pascals, volumetric flow rate or mass flow rate units so you can change to your favorite units. Efficiency probe, so TCFD always evaluate some kind of efficiency and all important parameters using the efficiency probe. The inputs are pretty easy. What is the inlet? So inlet is the inlet to the virtual tunnel and outlet from the virtual tunnel and torque patches because there is nothing rotating so there is there are no torque patches to be to be evaluated then there are for this particular application we would like to evaluate the drag coefficient lift coefficient and other other forces acting on our object so we can add force force object for which part of the geometry we would like to evaluate the forces so for all the parts connecting to our car body so now the direct direction of the of the okay of the lift so lift it's that direction it's correct direct direction is along the x direction it is also correct center of rotation we don't need to evaluate any any a rotation and momentum for this case or maybe you can of course and for that you, you just set the center of rotation and i think yeah the point zero zero is something uh something in the near the near the front wheels let's say so we can keep it in this way and pitch axis so for the evaluation of of the rotation or momentum coefficient it is the y y axis which is also correct you can also specify your particular particle axis for the for the torque evaluation so it doesn't make any sense for in this particular case reference area for for the direct coefficient and lift coefficient so we will set to two and reference length usually the length of the car which is in this case I'm not sure something four point or something like that. Okay, I'm not sure. Let's say four four point five meters, which could be yeah, uh, which could be this, I guess. Or yeah, for example, it's good to mention here. If you click the component, so component holds our geometry, and if you go for the information, then you can see the the bounding bounds bounds of your object so in the x direction the delta is 4.6 meters yeah here, here's the length of the car okay so we can use it so 4.6 reference velocity for the direct coefficient is yeah 40 and the monitor check is if we would like to see the values or all the parameters which are evaluated by the forces function during the simulation yes so we we would like to see the result instant values during the simulation then there are other menus which are not relevant for this particle application maybe the probes menu so here you can define the point everywhere within within your geometry for which you would like to to follow the val the values of for example pressure static pressure and velocity or other fields so let let us check some some point behind the car so if if we follow the dimension so let's say we can set something like this so uh, yeah th these dimensions are always in meters right so 4.5 meter which could be somewhere yeah, behind the car y is zero it's okay and z coordinates let's say yeah for something here somewhere zero so let me for example set something really behind behind the behind the car body okay so in this way and i think everything is set so let me save the setup let me click on the check setup so it will tell you if everything is okay so yeah i did i hopefully haven't done any mistake and now we can go for the simulation so i can i need to 
click on the settings and then click on this TCV manager, which holds all the functionality for running the simulation. So I will click apply to apply this filter. Now I can set the directory name. So my simulation, let's say, so in, under this path in this directory, all the simulation and the results will be stored. So now I need to click the write case. So it writes everything what I have set up until this moment. Yeah, and, and it prepares everything for the simulation and for the mesh generation. So after the case is written down to the disk, we can run the simulation. So we can run everything starting with the meshing process simulation and the post-processing by one click. So I will click this run all button. And now you can see that the meshing process is running and then we, can, we will see that the simulation is running. So after the application of the TCFD manager, we saw that the render view was split into several parts. So here in this part at the end of the simulation, the the report, automatically generated report in HTML format will be will be visualized here. And then there are two line chart views, so two graphs in which uh, in the first one the quantities during the simulation will be will be plotted and the quantities can be picked from the list. I will show you later on. And on the on the right or in the right um, right graph there will be the residuals of the solver during the during the simulation. Okay, so my machine is almost done. And now you can see that the simulation is starting. Okay, and immediately the simulation starts, we can we will see the values here. So for example, here in this in this graph, we can extend it to the full view. And here are basically the residuals for for each variable of the solver. And in this graph, we can see, for example, mass flow rate at the inlet and at the outlet. And if you click this quantity monitor, which hold these values and scroll a little bit down, then you can choose any any quantity here. So for example, I can go for for this drag, lift, and momentum coefficients and switch off the mass flow rate okay and if i go more bottom here i can change change the range of the of the y axis so left axis custom range and let's say go for minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 or something like that yeah it's better maybe 0 0.6 yeah, and now we can follow the convergence of the drag and lift coefficient. So first value is the instant values, and the second one is the average value over our averaging window, which is 200, 200 iterations. You can anytime change your layout, so you can create new layout here. You can open new line chart view, and for example, visualize another quantity. So now I can go here switch of everything and for example i can follow the the probe which i have set so values in the in the probe position which is uh -huh, yeah which is here so p the static pressure probe one so this is the value of static pressure in our defined point so we can follow, follow this for example as well and you can create anything what you want yeah so you can recombine combine as many charts as you want to follow during the simulation yeah so for example i don't know for example probes of x y and z component of the velocity in our probe location Okay, anytime during the simulation, you can, for example, if you see that, okay, the case is converged, so you can go, you can skip to next point, which basically means if there is just one point to be simulated, it stops the simulation and starts, 
start generating the reports and post-process the results. So now you can see that the simulation is done and now the, the results are processing and at the end we will see here in our first layout in this in this HTML viewer we, we will see the report. So th this was the example of this simple model. Yeah, but anytime you can set the similar things for the more complex model. So you can you can instead of this body closed, you can make avail available the, the the complex shape. So which is the rest of of this zero zero one part part. So let me show you if I change this, then okay, and you can see that this is more complex model, and then we we, we need to add other parts to be to be the full and closed model. So in this case, for example, I have an example which was which was here. So this was the simulation of the of the detailed body. Here is, for example, a simulation of uh, a visualization of the mesh for this detail detail body. For this kind of simulation, or or for this kind of uh, of geometry, we can also define the rotation. Yeah. So basically, for each wheel, so each wheel we can enclose into the cylinder for into into separate region for which we can define define the rotation. So maybe I will quickly open this case, which is uh, yeah here, here detailed model. Where is it? Uh, yeah, here this one. Okay, let me open this. And additionally, which, which I have set here, yeah, for example, here I have I have, here I have created let's say artificial case. So I have made just a cut of a part of the body, but for the front wheel, I have I have set the real real rotation, right? Which can be which can be done very simply. So instead of steady state simulation, I set a steady state plus transient with a constant time step, which corresponds to the one degree of of revolution of the wheel. And inside the components menu, okay. Inside the components now I have two components. Right, first is the is the body, and the second component is just the wheel enclosed to the cylinder, which is which is prepared. Yeah, so there is the cylinder is the the cylinder which encloses the wheel, and two parts of the wheel, the wheel rim and the wheel tire. And now here in the reference frame we have one static frame, and second one we have a rotating frame. Okay. I have so many simulation running now. So yeah, the second frame defines the rotation. Yeah, so holding the axis and point on the axis and the rotation speed. So which basically corresponds to the revolution of the wheel at 40 meters per second at a speed of 40 meters per second. And at the end, which I have somewhere here, you can you will have the transient results for which you can generate, for example, a video. So maybe, I don't know if it will be visible during this during this stream, but hopefully yes. Okay, yeah, so at the end you can, you can follow, you will have the transient simulation and you can visualize such, a, such a images, not only the contours or not only the distribution of the pressure, on the body, but also you can add streamlines and all other all other visualization in this way, for example. Okay, and similarly for the full model, for the full model, you can assign rotation to the each wheel separately. So each wheel can have different rotation, of course, at least <laughs> the uh, the direction of the of the of the revolution. So in this case, for example, we have five reference frame for rotating one, one static, and each rotating frame holds rotation of of each wheel. Yeah, rotating front left, front right, 
and so on. And you can run the simulation both with rotate, rotation, real rotation, or only with MRF, which is basically the rough, rough, rough guess to what is happening in the reality. But you can also also apply apply the steady state simulation with with the rotation using the M MRF. Okay, and I think it's four o'clock, so it's time to it's time to conclude. So it's time to go back to Lubosch. And yeah, this is all from my side now. So Lubosch, are you there? Are you still there? <laughs> yes, of course, Radek. Yes, yes, I am. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. It was very impressive. I liked it so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll take back uh, mm -hmm. the, the okay, presentation. Yes. So I'll do it myself. Uh, I'll, can you see my screen or does it? Oh, yeah, 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 I can. Yes, yes. OK, OK, perfect. So OK, thank you, Radek, again uh, for your contribution and, and the real example. And yeah, so we will move in our in our uh, webinar. So it's uh, here, it's the last part. So I would like to ask the audience to ask the questions and we will, we will, we will gladly answer them. So, so far uh, I will take a look, but uh, so far I can't see any questions. So, so feel free to ask your questions, really ask about anything. You just take your chance, use your, use your time with us. Uh, it's, it's your time, we are here for you and uh, you can ask about the basics. We are here for you. So uh, it's my favorite saying that there are no stupid questions. There are only stupid answers, right? So you can ask for anything. We will do our best to, to, to answer. And uh, it's also okay if you don't have any questions because we would, we would conclude. Uh, it's uh, yeah, the webinar is running about an hour anyway. So I can I think I can see the first question. Uh, Mr. Patel is asking, uh, can we simulate a compressible flow? Uh, I, I think this this question is pretty pretty simple. So I will I will answer it myself. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, compressible both, both compressible and incompressible is is modules are available in TCFD. That's for sure. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, another question. Will you implement control surfaces movement for aircraft? Uh, you, well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, that's it's certainly, it's, I think it's not a big deal, right? But maybe, maybe it depends, of course, for sure, it depends uh, which way it will move, right? Uh, but uh, uh, general, it's, Possible, yeah. In general, it's possible. Uh, another question: Why you don't use Fluent? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, this is this is another another software. So we develop another software. So it's it's a it's another way of thinking, I guess. Um, okay, okay. So okay, let's give it. Okay, some more time. Uh, I see another question: Is there any flexibility in choice of Time discretization scheme. Uh, it's a good question. Sh shall I answer it, or Radek, would you would you like to to pick this one? Well, it's it's up to you. In general, or I can oh. I can take this okay. one too. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So all right, all right. Yeah. In general, it is possible, but directly in TCFD, we use this only the the backward scheme, the Euler scheme, right? For the time for time discretization, but in general, we can scrape any other second order schemes and, and other, other time schemes. So implicitly, TCFD uses the first order scheme for the time discretization, but in general, it is possible to implement via scripting uh, a more uh, second order scheme or another, another schemes for time discretization. Okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we have quite a lot of questions uh, suddenly. So uh, is there, and Fridia, you answered this, uh, can you easily set up the simulation uh, to run on cluster? Uh, and uh, I need to, I need to yeah, move this to see the, the rest of the, of the question. Uh, yeah, and how it is done, is that done? Uh, uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, running on a cluster is, is, is very straightforward. It's 
extremely simple in, in Linux because the, the project was born in Linux and created, it, it's being developed in Linux. So it's very simple. You, you have just it installed and the way of running it is, uh, is the same as, as on a personal computer. Uh, besides that, uh, uh, yeah, you can use these IP addresses and you can you can send the uh, send the uh, you can send the job to the cluster uh, directly but I'm, I'm not exactly sure how to do that or like will, will you will you give me a hand uh, yes do... I can so so there are yeah there are very different in Windows and in Linux in Linux this is much more straightforward because you can preset directly the nodes which you will use for the simulation based on the IP which address. Is, which is in, in, in which menu? It's in it's in it, simulation. It, it, no. Yeah, it's it's in the. You can go to, if you can go top on the top in the second menu, I guess, in the simulation. But only in Linux. You can't see in, in Windows, right? Oh, okay, sure, sure. sure. Windows is okay, I'm, I'm in different Windows topology, now, okay. and in Windows it depends on the topology of the. HPC cluster you are using, and usually it's APG, HPC pack for for Windows so server, and it depends on the topology. But basically, you can run it on the on the separate node directly, or you can use this scripting which HPC HPC pack from from Microsoft offers, and you just say which nodes okay. to be to be used. It's more complicated, but it's also okay. Also possible. It's pretty okay. Running on cluster is pretty straightforward. Uh, the next question: uh, This solver is based on open foam. Uh, yes, it's it's based on on open foam. Yes, uh, we can we can tell you the details if you if you contact us later. Um, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, the questions about costs will be answered uh, uh, via email. So feel free to contact us via email. Uh, we'll be able to continue the. Uh, um, uh, okay. Okay. So we have we have a uh, couple of questions. I think it's it's time to time to finish here. Okay. So I will I will I will continue. So uh, it's it's almost time to time to, time to conclude. Uh, this the, the webinar is now approaching to its end. Thank you for your questions. We will answer all, all your questions. Uh, via email, so don't worry about that. But now it's a little bit late, so I will. The presentation is nearly done. I would I would like to finish with a uh, with a little story from the cat market. Uh, that maybe maybe you still remember that 20 years ago everyone had used AutoCAD for cat operations, and its market share was great at that time, and its position looked almost untouchable. Uh, but times are changing very quickly and uh, the world has changed and nowadays AutoCAD is not that good anymore. And there are others, there are others who were small at that time or did not even exist 20 years ago. But they reflected the change of our time. They reinvented the value for the customer and they, they made it, they made it to deliver it to the market and they are big now. And my point is I, I deeply believe that that the same change is going on right now in the CFD market, which is the younger and nicer sister of cat market. And it's been always a little bit behind. And this is exactly why we are here, why our company is here and our project is here. We are here to allow this change to happen also in the, cat, also in the CFD market. So CFD market also changes, but a little bit, it's a little bit behind. So let's make this happen. So this is our final message. Uh, here are a few of those who already share our visions with us. Many others are already on their way. Every one of you is welcome in our family. The bigger we are, the stronger we are. So feel free to join us. And this is, this is gonna be really it. Uh, feel free to tell us how we can support you. It's our job and also a pleasure. So feel free to contact us. And uh, Radek, would you conclude? Yeah, thank you. I will just quickly conclude. Thank you for watching us. It was a pleasure to share with you all all other visions and all our visions. And we will you are looking forward to to be contact with you. And and yeah, that's all. So have a nice day and bye bye. 
Okay, so we leave you with that. So for now, I would like to thank you for your attention and bye-bye.